Darren Mullen here again for Producer Nerd. Uh, in our um, previous video, we just went over the drums, just uh, mixing the drums in six mics. Uh, I have those for you right now. Just give those a little solo. Now remember, this band is playing in the same room, so. A lot of bleed from things. You can hear the bass, guitars, keys, a little bit of the singing. Percussion. So we're going to add some more instruments now. The drummer's microphone I'm just going to lead for now. It's got a little bit of cool, you know, I mean, it's got a little pock in the middle, right there. I'll take that out. Maybe useful as an extra snare sort of guy, but the couple there, I might even get that extra. So all I'm doing here in the EQ is I can hear a sound in that in that um, particular mic I don't like. I'm just grabbing a frequency, just and just adding some and just sweeping it around, making sure that my cue is down, you know, well, it's up, so I've got a bit of a spot. That's the sound I'm hearing. Get rid of it. So that's a usable mic for me. I'll just, um, you know, maybe I'll just leave it in, turn it down a little. Let's add it to our current drums and see if it sounds okay. I'm pretty happy with that. So our congas. So this is just two SM57s that pretty, you know, there's no, nothing much going on in there. I will bust them to a fader and treat them as one. So I'll just bust them to their own little bus. I'll call it percussion. I'm in Logic Pro X here for those who haven't um, seen the video before. So we're adding the percussion. Now there's a lot of stuff in there that um, that I think we could probably uh, do without, just as far as bottom end. And they're up pretty loud as well. So I'm going to go straight to Slate Digital Virtual Mix Rack. I won't need a few things here. I won't need. Uh, I think I'll just go straight with my channel in trimmer just for input. Take some bottom end off here as much as I can, still keeping that left Congo happening. So I think that's pretty good. And if anything, I might put the monster um, on it. I'd use this on the overheads as well. Um, this really slams them. And I'll just maybe specifically. Um, I'm EQing the actual notes of these two congas is just to tame some of the harmonics of them so so that they don't ring too long. And I always give my percussion um, their own little reverb. Inside uh, Space Designer in Logic, I think it's a medium spaces, rooms is my perk room, percussion room. They're really quite wide too, so I think we'll just pan them a little, a little tighter so that they're not really extra wide. And on the actual percussion bus, I might 
pull them over to the left because, you know, um, percussion is on the left. Let's just leave them in the middle for now. Okay, now let's add them to the drum kit. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Now the percussion is up there, but you know, if you've got a percussion player, he's in the mix, or what is he doing there, really? I mean, and this is really adding to the pop of the drum sound, so I'm very happy with his level up there. Um, <coughs> we're gonna add some bass. Now the bass in this particular track is just taken straight, um, direct out from a head, a Galleon Kruger head, I think it's a GK600. So it has no bleed. Now if you've got this opportunity to do this, you can run a bass amp, try and keep the level as, as low as you can. You know, our drummer's using sticks, no one's really trying to play softly. But take a direct out of the bass without miking it, because you'll get no other bleed from anything else. And you can always reamp it if you want that amp sound, but you know, I just love that direct sound. Especially it's gritty. It's got all the top end character that you want, really sits in the mix. If, you know, and a lot of people carve out the 200 hertz and stuff from your bass sound. I probably think that, you know, this sort of sound, it, 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 it isn't that pleasant, but it all depends on what's in the song. I prefer to probably carve out a little bit before the battle, right, around the 180 if you're going to be getting rid of that sort of sound. There's a ooh harmonic around the fifth, around there. If I'm going to do anything to bass, generally I'm, I will just be compressing it. I'll go straight to my compressor and I'll choose my favorite. Always look through your stuff in, you know, you can go through guitars, bass heavy, bass light, ba you know, so let's try the bass heavy. Bass light's good. So let's add this guy through to, with everything else. So. Okay, <clears throat> I still think that we can make changes to things as we add other instruments in and see their importance. So we've got a guitar, and this guy obviously is playing sort of in the center, but I'm playing clav. We have an extra keyboard player. I'd like to keep him in stereo. So maybe I'll put the clav um, and the guitar left and right. So I'll just move the guitar over to the left. Your bass should always be straight down the center. Kick and snare straight down the center, bass down the snare, uh, bass down the center as well. Uh, some people move the snare a little, I always keep it right in smack in the middle. So um, clav, we'll move this guy over to the right. So let's add these two, two together. <laughs> Now this guitar's just an SM57, there's a fair bit in there, so let's go to a virtual mix rack. And I don't want to gate out stuff, but let's just knock some bottom end off it for a start. Best sort of EQ to do um, guitar stuff I've found is the SSL style. So this guy here has got just the top end and mid range is all just, 
exactly what you need to make guitars pop. <laughs> a guitar amp isn't going to give you much over 6k so I never let much more than that out so I just set my out you know top end limiter Okay, so keys are in stereo. The guitar is playing a very important part, so I definitely need it there. I think it might need to be a little brighter, but you know, in in the the sort of scheme of things, let's just add it through and see how it's. If anything, I'm going to want it just to have a little bit of space um, reverb wise. So I'm going to bust these guys straight to an empty auxiliary and I'm going to put a now reverb on it. Now I did earlier on put one on a sampled snare. It was a chrome verb and a drum chamber. So I'm going to copy that setting and put that as our um, as our extra auxiliary. I'll just call it Rev and I will insert my chrome verb. This is a, a straight up verb um, that comes with Logic. Paste. 100% wet of course because it's a bust reverb. It's not an insert. So, uh, And I'm just going to pop this on both the clav and Clav and guitar. It's numb. still think those keyboards probably could be a little more compressed as well. Um, it's a, a Fender Rhodes sound, so I will I'll just squash them up a little bit, compress them, hard ratio, make up gain, pull a threshold. <laughs> Like that. It's just got an extra, you know, you want drums to sound like the drummer's got big muscles, he's really rocking, he's got uh, making a face, you know, and the keyboards are playing, so we're hitting a little harder. It's just about energy. So um, keys are done. <clears throat> All we've got left is two vocals. Now, these guys here are probably going to require a little bit of extra um, love, uh, especially since there's a lot in these microphones. If I just um, solo these guys by themselves. Keep forgetting things will never be the same again. I keep forgetting how you made it so clear. I keep forgetting now. They don't sound very special um, as far as EQ goes. Um, it's just an SM58. We've seen them a million times out of gigs. Um, it's nothing, it's an industry standard mic. Um, and I'm seeing through a 57. Um, I can probably just separate myself a little bit off to one side so that you can hear um, the difference between the both of us. And a little bit of reverb. Yeah. 
Okay, so the biggest trick to get these vocals going, I mean, I'm, um, of course I'm going to EQ Sarah's voice. Um, that will be virtual mix rack. But the main thing that needs to be done with her mic is to, is to get the drums out of it a little, right? So I don't want her mic, I don't want to turn her up and have the drums and um, you know everything else turned up with it because those other elements are in her microphone. Just listen to her mic by itself. Even at the beginning, when the snare is probably what I want to take out the most. Um, the easiest way for me to do this is to use a ducker. I go to dynamics, a noise gate in Logic, and I switched it to ducker. Just push these back up, maybe pull them back about five. Now you'll see if I side chain it to the snare. Closes, it turns off her microphone or turns it down just a just a little when it hears a snare. <laughs> now the trouble is, it doesn't work exactly on time, so it's a little late. So the best way to do it is to grab another snare. Just duplicate my track <clears throat> and set its output to nothing. So you, can, you don't hear it, but it is there, right? And then we creep it back. So it, we, we actually sneak it back. Let me just zoom in on a hit here. You see uh, our snares here. I sneak it back a touch. All right, I'll call it trigger. And we'll go back to her voice, open up the noise gate, and we'll set it to the trigger audio track. You can still hear it a, a little. We want the snare to be gone. So let's go back up to that snare track again, the trigger. Let's move him back even more. I keep forgetting we're not in love anymore. He's pretty well gone. I keep forgetting things will never be the same again. I keep forgetting. Now, of course, you can hear all these, you know, volume uh, knobs in her in her voice in her voice. But when you put her back in the mix, you won't notice it but the snare will be gone from her voice. How you made it so clear. Now I can do that with a kick drum as well, put another one on every time it hears the kick. Dep yeah, I, keep forgetting now. I mean, I want to add some beautiful top end, some air to her voice, uh, the probably a little bit of um, mids I may want to get rid of. Every time you're near Oh, hear your hello, singing you could only stay a while. Oh, hey, I know that it's hard for you to say the things we both know are true. So tell me how come I keep forgetting we're not in love anymore. I keep forgetting things will never be the same. We're getting very close here, so um, I'm thinking that just a little bit more reverb on her. We definitely need to poke her out. There is a secret weapon inside Slate's arsenal that I love for this thing. It's called FG Bomber. Pull it out, stick it on present. You've got present, fat or tight. Presence, push it up a bit, just a little bit of intensity, and it will add that little bit of nose in her vocal that will push it out, out front. I can't forget how you made us so I can't forget it now. Every time I hear Now all 
the time that I've been doing this this mix, um, I've noticed that um, I can hear through my monitors here that the mix is pumping. The master is really pumping, so I'm going to add a virtual mix rack to the master track. Master channel has its own. I like to work with these plugins. I probably won't need the SSL EQ, but I will put earth and I will put air. I'll tell you about those in a second. So, using my straight out trimmer, I'm going to pull the input gain from the master track. Let's just play our track. Pull it right back. Add some air and earth, which is the meat in between. I'm going to push the 116, pushing the, you know, the, the limiter. To me, the whack on that um, snare is a little bit too compressed now. In the overheads, um, I will bring back that monster plug-in that I was using to whack and, and compress the overheads. So let's just hear a little bit more. Oh. That's a bit better, you can hear the snare a little bit more, it's popping. Bass is a little bit thick for me. Um, between um, the limiter will always be my last plug-in um, on a channel or on the master. Just on the master, I'm going to add my final uh, EQ, which would be a Logic Linear Phase EQ. I'm going to pop around my monitors here. Probably won't notice that because you're listening to it on your own, but I'm going to pop around the monitors and make a few decisions on my EQ, just depending on um, you know what I'm listening to. I'm listening through some uh, KRK V6s, which I find bright, but they do have a very good image, tight bottom end. Uh, Event 2020 Bass version 3s, very nice and big, um, big sounding, and then my mains, my main uh, pair. Then I go to three different passive pairs. Uh, Control 1 JBLs, you find them in every um, you know shopping mall and um, those sort of outdoor areas, uh, beer gardens and stuff. Um, so I definitely want them to sound good on those. Um, a pair of Cricks, uh, Australian made high end, um, you know, home theater or, you know, high end hi fi speakers. And my little tiny Grover Noddington, uh, Grover Noddings CR2s, I think they are. So these ones are fantastic. I'm just gonna go do the rounds. Sounding fantastic, I think, now, and we're definitely ready to bounce off and go off to mastering. So um, I will show you a few um, tricks on other, other tracks as well. Remember that this mix probably only took uh, me about, you know, I think if you add the two videos together, you'll find out it um, could be an hour for a whole mix of a band. So it's not hard once you've um, just figured out the right sort of plug-in, um, you know, and adapting your EQ um, method. I always think about energy. You want to add more top end energy, bottom end energy, and think of EQs as energy. And sort of, you know, the more that you use uh, your rig, you will get faster. This is the way I do it. I hope that you learnt from what I did. Um, if you've got any questions, just pop them in the comments um, or send me an email. So um, it's bye for now, and I'll see you at the next mix. See you later.